Welcome to One Mind Zen. Tonight's Dharma talk is given by Myung Jin and San. There's a lot of stuff that we've been told that we think we understand maybe or at least intellectually have sort of an exposure to and there are some things that maybe we just don't quite agree with although we might not admit to it back in the time of the original uh, Sangha only monks only members of the Sangha could hope to become Arhants from a practical perspective as who was exposed to the Buddha's teachings who was exposed to the Dharma that was probably just kind of a given because you know odds are that if you didn't have that exposure then you probably weren't going to become an arhat fair enough um there was also a time when they said that women could not be enlightened and the best you could do is hope for a fortunate rebirth as a man and eventually the teaching moved on beyond that and you know the sangha admitted nuns in and um the teachings evolved further and then it was the doctrine of of buddha nature right where we're all already buddha we just have to actualize it let's say we all have buddha nature we are all potential buddhas and that's one of those things that yeah okay cool i'm a buddha no i'm not yeah i'm already awakened no i'm not as suzuki roshi said you're all already buddha and you need a little work so it's gotten to the point now where um if you had to be a monastic if you had to be ordained let's say at least bottom line ordained if not an actual you know resident of a temple um there are a lot of zen practitioners and we'll limit it to zen practitioners for the purpose of this talk there are a lot of zen practitioners that aren't in monasteries aren't ordained have no intention of being ordained see no point in it it's not like you can give up your day job and go running off to a temple somewhere it's just not a practical thing for a lot of people even those of us who you know are followers of the great way and really 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 want to pursue it and and actualize our buddha nature sometimes you know you just have insurance premiums to pay and being a monastic doesn't quite pull that off there was a time when um things were a little hard for me let's say there were some rough times and uh there was sort of a loose opportunity for me to actually uh go and live in a zen center and i was talking to a friend of mine about it so i don't know man i just you know it just feels like i'm i don't know running away from something and his comment to that was maybe it's something you're running to 
And this was like a total non-Buddhist, you know, he may have read a koan or two in his day, but, you know, not necessarily a conscious carrier of the Dharma, but the message was still there. As it turns out, I didn't go and live in the temple anyway. But here I am, we're on Zoom for just about four years of One Mind Zen on Zoom, which is incredible. But we've got a wonderful Sangha that live nowhere near each other, and we spread the Dharma as best we can from week to week. Not being a monastic in a temple and having a Sangha that's on video every week, there would be those who say, yeah, that's really not going to cut it. You know, you're just not going to reach that next level. Buddha nature is inherent in all of us. And ergo, the potential for realizing our awakened nature is possible in everyone. Monastics or ordained people are not superior to lay practitioners. They don't have it over anyone. They may have been ex ex exposed to, you know, more teachings. Okay. You only need one to get that sudden awakening, right? It can be that rock hitting a piece of bamboo. It can be that, ah, here, let me grab your nose and twist it a little bit. And, you know, whoa, I'm awakened. Dao Wei, who was a Chan master from about, I don't know, a thousand-ish years ago, let's say, without getting too deeply into the math. What we have of his uh, record of teachings is letters that he sent to lay practitioners. These were people just like any of us with a day gig who were interested, devoted to studying the Dharma. They wanted to live the Dharma and they wanted to realize their true nature. One of the things that Dao Wei went into was particularly pertinent to the situation we have today. Although Bodhidharma said the great way is beyond words and letters. Among those words and letters, other than just the scriptures themselves, among the words and letters that we're exposed to every day that aren't the great way are everything from reading the news to doom scrolling on whatever social media platform you mean. And so, yeah, I can see where the great way is definitely beyond those words and letters. And Dao Wei goes into um, the idea of, of knowledge. Excuse me one minute. My phone decided that uh, 7.30 was a time to set off an alarm. So what, one of the things that uh, Dao Wei went into was knowledge and wisdom. And are they in conflict? Are they the same? How do we actually use knowledge. 
we could get this knowledge, you know, by reading owner's manuals of, you know, how to operate a certain piece of machinery or equipment. Let me grab this quote here. It's from uh, chapter 31 of uh, Swamp and Flowers, uh, which is yet another Cleary translation. If you want to study this path, you must understand right where you are. As soon as you rely on the slightest knowledge, you miss the scene right where you're standing. When you've completely comprehended the scene right where you are, then all kinds of knowledge, all without exception, are things right where you are. Let me repeat that bit. Then all kinds of knowledge without exception are things right where you are. As the ancestral teacher said, at the very moment one speaks of knowledge, knowledge itself is mind, and this very mind itself is knowledge. Since knowledge is right now, if right now you don't go to another moment, but do away with your knowledge right where you are, then you join hands and walk alone to, along together with the ancestral teachers. If you cannot yet be like this, don't go wrong in your knowledge. How do we, how do we parse that? We're all exposed to a lot of knowledge. And a lot of it can be a distraction. A lot of it can be those words and letters that aren't the great way. But, and there's always a but, because we live in a world where we have to accumulate some sort of knowledge in order to function in one way or another, we can't let that knowledge be a hindrance. We have to use the knowledge we have, whether it's of sutras or how to change the oil in your car. We need to put that knowledge to our benefit and for the benefit of all others. If we can maintain that straight ahead primary point of right here, right now, then all the knowledge in the world, while useful, isn't a hindrance. Knowledge is right here, right now, being mindful of this very second. This very second, right now, you are in whatever environment you are in, and you're listening to a Dharma talk. Period. That's it. If you remember some of it, great. If something about Dao Wei sticks in your head and you've accum accumulated that wee bit of knowledge, great. We use the knowledge, we use the wisdom interchangeably, not even interchangeably, more of a concurrently. We apply wisdom and knowledge to this very moment. What is correct function in this very moment? How is my knowledge, how is my wisdom going to be of benefit to all sentient beings? How is it going to help them realize their own true nature? If I get hung up on second guessing and letting my mind drift, thinking about 
I don't know, some argument I had, and damn, if I had only made this retort, it would have been so much better. If you can drop all that stuff that isn't right here and right now, if you can apply everything to this moment without hindrance, just clear mind, using every tool at our disposal for the benefit of our own realization and the realization of all sentient beings.